half years, we've been doing a series of internal investigations, compliance reviews, we've put in place an immunity hotline, and in fact some tip-offs from that internal hotline enabled us to uncover some of these um, practices. So I think it is quite serious and it has to be dealt with in a very serious fashion. From our part, we're certainly ready to work with the Commission. Uh, we do have a, a, a problem in that a lot of our senior leadership has changed and we have an institutional memory issue. Mm -hmm. uh, in one matter that was referred the other day involving an Avenge company, three of nine people implicated are still with the company. So we need to work much more closely with the co uh, Competition Commission to get to the bottom of this and most importantly to put it behind us. Mm -hmm. Well, we had Simon Brown of Just One Lap earlier on on the show saying it's better to adopt the approach Tiger Brands did with the Competition uh, Commission as opposed to Pioneer where Pioneer proved that it's no point defending yourself with that. So I'm asking the question, is this an admission of guilt? You know, two years ago, the Commission came to us with an allegation of being part of a cartel that was 32 years old. We looked at the <coughs> evidence and we said, of course we are guilty. Uh, there was no way you could uh, deny that. We paid the fine uh, and we dealt with the issue. And I think there's no shortcut to dealing with what is essentially correcting historical business practices. And it's not just construction. A series of sectors have been shown to have operated this way. We now have to clean it up and move forward. And make sure it doesn't happen again. I mean, what are some of the safety measures you're putting in place to kind of ensure that this isn't a, a repetitive p process moving forward? Look, you know, the one thing that I've learned in this whole process over the past uh, two and a half years, I joined Avenge in 2008. We've put in place a compliance review. We've sent our two teams of lawyers to interview uh, our people who have a uh, pricing authority. We even put in place an immunity uh, hotline and a tip-off line. Processes alone are not going to solve this issue. At the end of the day, you're dealing with individual human beings who respond differently to these processes. So we will do everything reasonably possible to, to deal with this issue. Uh, Roger, also just touching on some of the reports that we've been hearing, uh, you know, an alleged meeting that occurs between the construction companies <coughs> and, uh, you know, uh, perhaps a group called The Party. Uh, in, to your knowledge, was Avenge in, in any way involved with these meetings to allocate tenders to each other? Look, I've written to former employees of the company to ask them explicitly if they can shed any light on this. I've also called on the Competition Commission to name these members of the party because there's a lot of speculation about who was in this party and who wasn't. And until we actually discover, we're not going to know. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be very helpful rather than speculating to name who the party was. Tell us about you know, what you think this is going to result in you know, and how it's going to affect the overall industry and, and the perceptions of the industry. Well, I think, I think to get into that debate at this point is a bit early. Yeah. You know, uh, when we were involved in the construction of Soccer City, we took a look at, for example, what it cost to um, construct Wembley Stadium. And we were infinitely cheaper um, than that, t both in terms of time and price. But I think to get into a discussion at this stage as to whether uh, you know, people overpaid or not is a bit early. We'll have to see. Uh, certainly, <coughs> we would be very willing to uh, have everyone take a close look at our pricing structures. The important point about construction that shouldn't be lost is that this industry runs on very low margins, very low margins. So it's not a business where you make super profit. In the building industry, if you make a 3% margin, you're doing reasonably well. So uh, I think the industry dynamics is one thing, but that should not detract from the seriousness of these allegations. And the market doesn't like uncertainty. We have to remove that certainty. This also happens at a time where infrastructure spending is at a, is at a, a low in South Africa. So there are also market dynamics affecting share prices. Yeah. We have to bring certainty to this industry. Well, a part of that has been, I mean, and Simon, uh, Simon uh, Brown of Just One Lap again highlighted in this industry where there's lack of visibility at this stage, your comments yesterday provided a glimmer of hope uh, for those like himself that are delving into that construction space right now. I mean, what's your outlook moving forward? It's certainly more optimistic than what we've been <coughs> hearing from other players. Well, I think the, the big issue in construction is infrastructure spend. And uh, that needs to take off in South Africa again. Mm -hmm. the, infra the construction industry employs about 400,000 people. Uh, last year, there were masses of job losses in the sector. So a lot of the fortunes of the sector in South Africa is riding on infrastructure spend. We are, of course, a global company in 28 countries. 
uh, other areas are more active. But the South African infrastructure spend is a big uh, swing factor here. Uh, Roger, just uh, also looking at the steel industry because you know you also have a very big exposure to the steel market. There are rumours of sudden uh, tightness in the supply of steel products and this obviously affects those who consume the steel products. What's your experience been with the steel manufacturers? Well, in recent times, you know, to October 2008, everyone was on a high. Prices went up uh, by as much as 70%. Volumes went up by as much as 40%. And then we had the global uh, economic meltdown. We've started to see volumes um, starting to come back again. But um, you know, if I could predict the steel price, I'd be in a different job. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I think we all mired in where the macro economy is going.